Welcome back to Cloud Talks. Julian and I are happy to be your host again for today's Cloud Talks episode about the SharePoint Admin Center. If it's your first time with us, let me welcome you and give you a short introduction. Juliana Grava is one of our operations lead within the Modern Workplace Department and located in Romania. Now, as you can guess from my accent, I'm located in Germany. My name is Nico Caligari, and I'm a cloud consultant within the Modern Workplace area. Juliana and I, we have made it our missions to help you on your cloud journey and show you all the great possibilities. In this season of the Cloud Talks, we are going to show you the different admin portals of the M365 family. Hello, Juliana. I'm glad that we are doing this episode together. Hi, Nico. Thank you so much for your introduction. And yes, I do feel you. SharePoint is a great application. It's a document management tool that enables users to collaborate. And also, if you administer it correctly, it can surely boost your organization's productivity. That is correct. And as I mentioned earlier, we are here to, at Cloud Talks, so we look especially at the administration point of view. And as a SharePoint Online is also part of the M365 solutions, it integrates all the capabilities in the cloud the cloud provides. But I propose we begin with the SharePoint Online introduction, which I know Yana is eagerly prepared for you. Thank you, Nico. Let's dive right in. Indeed, as we already mentioned, SharePoint is both a document management platform and a collaboration platform, but actually it's way more than that. Once you've stored your content in SharePoint Online, you will be able to access it from anywhere as long as you're using a managed device. Um, you can sync it to uh, your mobile device, for example, and not only your, um, your files, but also some uh, some news pages that you might be following or some apps. You can collaborate in real time um, in SharePoint and in Microsoft Teams uh, on a variety of uh, documents like uh, Microsoft Word documents or PowerPoints, PowerPoint presentations or Excel sheets. Um, you have a rich web and mobile experience with a lot of um, dynamic content according to the device you're using. And um, you can also share inside and outside of the organization securely your files and um, the tasks that you, you are working on. Next, we will look at the types of SharePoint sites in SharePoint Online. So um, we have two SharePoint um, uh, sites, two types of SharePoint sites, a team sites and communication sites. The first one is used for um, collaboration on projects. For example, you might have a team site for, uh, for your department or for your project. And these uh, team sites provide uh, document storage and you can share the files with all of the uh, site members. Um, it, they support custom lists, uh, workflows, and also um, direct integration with Microsoft Teams. So you can um, see your files and work on them directly in Microsoft Teams. And the second type of uh, site is the communication site. These, uh, these sites are designed to broadcast information to other teams or even to an entire organization. And when you create a communication site, you can use one of the existing site templates, for example, topic. Uh, this, um, this template is used to share information such as news or um, events or any other content. Um, there is another uh, template which is showcase where you use photos or images to showcase your, your product, for example, or you can start with a blank template and then create your own design. Uh, depending on your needs, you can choose one of, uh, one of these. And any of the templates can be customized by adding uh, SharePoint web parts, which are dynamic page elements. And these display your text, your images, files, videos, and a variety of other content types as well. Thirdly, we also have hub sites in SharePoint Online. This is a new feature available only on SharePoint Online. And 
if we think about how to define hub sites, um, we can just think of them as families of sites. These are used to organize uh, team sites or communication sites together. Um, and we will see on hub sites that they have um, the same navigation and you have um, organized search. You can search very easily uh, within all the sites that are registered under the same hub site. So this will help you to discover related content as well. Um, one thing to mention is that in order to, to register a SharePoint hub site, you have to be an administrator since we are um, today talking about sh the SharePoint Admin Center. Um, site owners cannot register um, a hub site. They can only associate a SharePoint site to an existing hub site. Traditionally, SharePoint permissions have been managed through a set of permissions groups within a site. Um, as you know, there would be an owner, a member or a visitor. In SharePoint, uh, in the M365, this remains true for some types of sites, but additional little options are available. Uh, per se, in team sites, permissions are managed through the associated M365 group or Teams team. And the M365 group owners become a site owner and a group member becomes a site member. And if there is a team associated, team owners become site owners and team members become site members. Um, and actually view only permissions are only managed through the site. And the communication site permissions are managed using the standard SharePoint permissions, as we all know, they are the owners, members and visitors. And on hub sites, they can be managed either through the standard SharePoint permissions as groups, owners, members, and visitors, or the associated 365 group, if there's one. When we talk about permissions sharing, we definitely have to talk about shareable links. That's a proper way to share your individual file or folder without giving people permissions to the whole site or a group or a team. Um, there are these three, or actually four types we have to talk about then. Anyone with, with the link, this type of link works for everyone, including people outside the organization. They don't have to authenticate. It's a way to grant anonymous access. So be careful with that. On the next link, you have the people in your organization. This type of sharing link excludes guests, but the users don't need to be group or team member. And then there's people with existing access. This type of link works only for existing members or you can even specify it more with specific people. This type of link only works for the people that users specify when they only uh, sharing the item. Next up, we will take a look at the SharePoint Admin Center. Uh, we can administer the, um, um, the SharePoint settings either via the SharePoint Admin Center or via PowerShell, but today we will only take a look at the SharePoint Admin Center. Uh, this can be accessed either via direct link or we can go through the Microsoft 365 Admin Center uh, in the Admin Center section and just choose SharePoint. When you open the SharePoint Admin Center, you will see the layout is very similar to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And as we mentioned uh, in, the, in, the, in the first episode, Microsoft is working on bringing the same layout to all of their admin centers. So the, the homepage looks very similar. We also have a dashboard uh, where we can uh, add specific cards that we need. Uh, in, in the default layout, uh, the dashboard shows um, all activities in, in some graphs, along with message center and uh, um, service health report. And these are tailored specifically for the SharePoint service. Now, some key activities or some key tasks that a SharePoint admin might do would be um, turning external sharing on or off for the whole organization or for specific sites, perhaps, adding or removing site admins, registering site hubs, um, viewing re reports, for example, to monitor file activity or user activity, 
and managing site storage limits. And if we take a closer look on the homepage, um, we will actually see uh, the two reports that I mentioned earlier, SharePoint file activity report and the SharePoint site usage report. So the first one shows the number of files um, that have specific types of activity for uh, each day in the past uh, 30 days. For example, if an activity occurs multiple times in one day or um, on the same file, the file is con uh, counted only once for that day. And the activities would be, for example, um, viewed or edited um, or shared externally and so on. And the SharePoint site usage report shows the total number of um, active sites of the total number of sites that were active in the past 30 days. Active sites means there are uh, where users viewed um, a page or they modified or uploaded, shared um, or synced the file. And also on the home uh, homepage of the SharePoint Admin Center, we have the message center, which as we mentioned offers a high level overview of up upcoming changes, uh, new features, updates, and so on related to SharePoint. And the service health, uh, which shows the, well, as the name suggests, the current um, health status of your SharePoint service. In the SharePoint Admin Center, we do have the possibility to enter um, active sites or deleted sites. Um, on the active site section, it shows all the SharePoint sites hosted in your tenant um, by the administrator or by the group owners. This page shows you all the information of each site of such such as name, site URL, storage used, particular sites, and who is the primary admin of each site. On the deleted site section, you see all the deleted SharePoint sites within your organization and all the details such as site URL, storage use, primary admin. You do have to remember that on default, sites are retained for 93 days in the permanently, before they get permanently deleted. If you want to change that, you have to do that via um, PowerShell. And because it's really easy and really nice to see how we create a site, we'll do that right now in this following demo. So we start at the home page, and from here we go to sites, active sites, and there you can see all the active sites in the tenant. Um, we go and create. And we do have the possibility, as Juliana mentioned earlier, to create a team size or a communication size. For this purpose of the demo, we go just with the team size. Um, so you just have to uh, use a name or find a name. It's checking in the background if it's still available. Um, a pretty cool thing is that uh, if you want to uh, create a site for someone different else, you don't have to be a, a group owner. So we take Juliana, if, if, if you spell her right, you will find her. So, and you can, you could select a different language if you want to, you can go in advanced settings and say if it's a private or if it's a public uh, site and you can switch the time zone if you want to. But we don't want that, so we can go on next. And now you can see uh, they just ask you if is there some additional owner or some you can add some members if you want to. We just pick myself um, as a member, and we can go and finish. And as you can see, that's our site we just created. So that's how easy it is. Under policies, we have two sections, sharing and access control. The sharing section allows you to control a variety of options regarding the sharing experiences of users, such as external sharing, um, some default settings for file and folder links. And Nico already explained to us uh, about sharing links. This is also connected to that. And some other settings that uh, we will see in a demo shortly. Some of the things to consider when configuring the sharing section would be, for example, uh, who should be allowed or not allowed to share externally, or if you want to allow uh, anonymous access links, or if you need 
to require guests to sign in, for example. Uh, these are all the decisions that you will need to take when you configure this section. And the access control section, this allows you to, for example, block access from some certain locations, or um, it allows you to require devices to be managed in order to gain access to your content. Uh, it also allows you to control what happens to idle sessions. Uh, you can um, set a time to, to make them automatically sign out. And here is also the place where you will decide uh, what, what to do with apps that don't use modern authentication. Before we dive into the demo, we need to highlight one more aspect, which is very important. And this is regarding um, the external sharing and all of the other section uh, settings, actually, uh, because OneDrive is um, basically um, just a, a a group of sites within SharePoint, all of the organization level sharing settings directly affect OneDrive just as they do um, other SharePoint sites. And in the demo, we will uh, take a closer look at how we can modify the external sharing sessions for, uh, for SharePoint and for OneDrive as well. Let's dive into our policies demo. Again, we start from the SharePoint homepage and we navigate to policies and sharing. Uh, the, first, um, the first section is external sharing. And um, as we already mentioned here, we can um, control the sharing at the organization level for, for SharePoint and the OneDrive and specifically external sharing on this section. Um, we will notice that if we change the, the external sharing settings for SharePoint, for example, the OneDrive external sharing changes as well from new and existing guests to existing guests. So um, this is what, uh, what we mentioned before, that they are interconnected and OneDrive sharing settings cannot be more permissive than the SharePoint uh, sharing settings. We also have some more external sharing settings. For example, if we need to limit external sharing by domain, we can do so right here. We can uh, allow or block a specific domain and here we can um, um, we can insert the, the name. Um, we can also allow only specific users from uh, certain security groups to share externally um, if this is something we need for our organization. Uh, another, settings we, another setting we can choose is whether or not guests might, might need to sign in um, with the same account where they received the invitation to. And um, whether or not we want to allow guests to share items that they don't own. And also when we send a verification code uh, to, to guests, for example, uh, we can choose here if they need to re-authenticate after a certain period. Next, we have the default uh, file and folder link settings. For example, uh, we can choose the type of link that's selected by default when a user shares a file. Um, here we have uh, selected only people in, uh, in the organization. This is the default one, but of course, if uh, the user needs, they can, uh, they can change the, the sharing link uh, as, uh, as they need. And we can also choose what type of permission is selected by default for sharing links. Uh, Nico was telling us all about sharing links um, earlier. And other settings um, that we can, we can adjust here is whether or not owners can see the names of people who viewed their files in OneDrive um, and whether or not they can display those names on files and pages in SharePoint and whether or not to use short links for sharing files and folders. And next, let's take a short look at access control as well. Um, as we mentioned before, here we can uh, we can uh, decide what to do with unmanaged devices if we want to allow them full access, uh, limited access, or for example, on web only, or to block access altogether. Uh, we can also um, automatically sign out users that have inactive browsers set. Uh, sessions. So uh, if we toggle this on, uh, on, we can set a timer to sign out users after a certain period and we can decide if we want to give them a notice or not. Uh, again, uh, in case we need to, for example, limit um, access from um, specific um, locations, uh, we can 
choose here which IP ranges to, to allow. And uh, the last settings that we can change is uh, about apps that don't use modern authentication. So uh, legacy apps, here we can uh, choose if we need, if we want to allow access or to block the access. So that's, um, those are all the settings we can, we can change from the policy section. Under settings, you can administer five sections. In the default admin center, you can choose if you want to work with the new SharePoint admin center or if you want to enter the classic one. Um, you can also manage the latest features and access all the classic features. Modern pages are so easy for users to design and publish and are built to look great on your devices. That's what you can do there. On SharePoint uh, notifications, you can enable the users to turn on the notification on their mobile app. That's, so you do that when you want them to, or they can do that uh, if you want them to receive notification if some SharePoint content got updated. On site creation, um, you allow users or you can allow to uh, if users can create sites from the sharepoint main page and onedrive uh, you can also set the url for the team creating sites in the default time zone if you want to on the last demo for today uh, i will show you um, on the settings page how you can uh, manage your site storage um, so as you may have seen, I have been uh, going on settings. From here, we go to site storage limits. And as you can see, on default, it's always set to automatic. Um, we want to manage this. So we go on manual and save. And actually, that's it. But we want to manage it a bit more accurately. So we go on sites, active sites again, and it, we go to our cloud test uh, page and as you can see it's already changed to one terabit but we want to do that a bit uh, more accurate and maybe say um, just five gigabits of uh, storage space is available on that side and actually you can uh, say okay if, if it's like almost run out of storage, uh, you can um, send an email to, to the owner of the email, uh, to, to the owner of the site. That will be Juliana in our case. Um, let's say after 90% of the used storage, uh, Juliana will get an email. So after 4.5 gigabits of um, storage account, Juliana get an email with a notification that the storage is almost run out. We go on save and actually that's it. And that concludes our last demo for today. That was great, Nico. Thank you very much for, for your helpful demos. And I think this about concludes our session for today. Of course, there would be a little bit more to say about the SharePoint Admin Center. We cannot cover everything today. Uh, we would, however, like to mention two more things. Uh, if you're looking for some familiar features from the classic SharePoint Admin Center, you can find them under more features. And last but not least, there is also a migration section uh, which can help you migrate your content from on-premises file servers or your SharePoint servers to Microsoft 365 or also from other cloud services. That's right. And we do encourage you to go exploring the SharePoint Admin Center on your own if you have the relevant role. And let us know if you have any more questions and if we can help you anyway. Yes, we would be uh, very happy to answer any SharePoint related questions. And we actually have a team of SharePoint and Microsoft 365 ed experts here at Accessa. Uh, they and we are ready to assist you with SharePoint implementation, file migrations, administration, adoption and governance, or even day to day operations and support. And if we don't, uh, and if the content we covered today was not tailored specially to your needs, don't worry. Stay tuned for the more upcoming cloud series episodes, where we'll tackle more of the administration side of the 365 family. Next on our list is the Teams Admin Center. Looking forward to that. See you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye.